Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Boot Hill Heroes for the Nintendo Switch. Now, just for the basics, Boot Hill Heroes was released on December 15th of 2020, and it was released for a regular list price of $9.99. However, as of filming of this video, which is December 19th of 2020, it's currently on sale for $6.49. Also, there is a peculiar situation about Boot Hill Heroes. It's that basically this is the first entry in a two-part RPG series, and the first part, which was Boot Hill Bounties, was actually released back in April of 2020. I have no idea why the developer decided to release part 2 before they actually released the original part 1. However, I missed Boot Hill Bounties back in the month of April, so I'm going to be reviewing this as a fresh face to the series who actually hasn't played part 2, which will give a pretty decent perspective on the game. Now as usual, while you're watching this video, if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit the like button, and why not subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Now first, as usual, let's figure out what exactly Boot Hill Heroes is all about. So basically, Boot Hill Heroes is a JRPG at heart. However, what's peculiar is that it's actually set in a spaghetti western type storyline. Now if that feels counterintuitive, at first it does feel like an odd mix, because obviously JRPGs are a typically eastern type of gameplay. However, spaghetti westerns are the most western type of movie that you can have. However, as we'll see, Boot Hill Heroes does an actually really good job about melding the two, but we'll get back to that later in the critique. So let's start with the basic mechanics of the game. So it's a JRPG at heart. It's set in a 16-bit style, and also it's a turn-based combat system where you don't see the characters, you only see the enemies when you come into a battle screen. Basically, if you want a point of reference for a more... Uh, comparable game, I would say the most comparable game you can use is Earthbound, or in Japan what they call the Mother series. And I would say that the overall setting and gameplay is very reminiscent of that series. However, the scope obviously of this game is not as huge as the Earthbound series, but the general gameplay feeling is quite comparable. Now the battle system itself is quite interesting because there is a move counter. Basically, you have a meter or a gauge that fills at the bottom that will indicate who will act first in the battle. And based on the type of action you choose, the action will take longer to execute or shorter to execute. And rather than basically trying to execute the most powerful attack you can on each turn, this game is much, much more about timing, with basically certain abilities synergizing between the characters, but if you have the right timing. For example, there's an attack that will do more damage if the enemy has a status effect. However, generally the characters with this attack won't be able to establish status effects on the enemies. So one of the other characters has to use their ability first to cause a status effect on the enemy, causing your secondary ability to do more damage. That's just one example of many, but basically when you start playing this game, you realize that you can't just punch the most powerful ability every turn. It really is all about synergy and timing. But other than that, most of the basic classic elements of a JRPG are there. Basically, battles will award you experience, which will award your character's levels, which will give them better stats. You also have to keep gearing up your characters by buying better weapons, better armor when you stop at different shops as you move out throughout the game. There are also specialty shopkeepers that can actually enhance your weapons with the different regions that will be dropped by the enemies that you beat throughout the game. And lastly, what is probably the most original element of the game is the way you acquire new abilities is by wearing different hats. Basically, the hats, you equip it like any other part of your equipment, However, rather than giving you stats, these will lead to gaining new abilities based on the type of hat you're wearing at the moment you're winning battles. Because every battle, on top of experience, will be awarding vantage points. And basically, based on each number of vantage points that you gain while wearing a peculiar hat, will eventually award you a new ability. So basically, hats are sort of like a job system in this game. And obviously, some hats are associated to some characters and not every hat can be worn by everybody. Now, if you've watched my other reviews, I normally start talking about the storyline, but this time I purposely didn't talk about it in the description of the game because it's actually part of my critique. 
And as usual, I normally start with the strong points of the game, and that's where we're going to start talking about the storyline. So as I explained, this game's storyline is basically based on a spaghetti western movie style. And it starts out with an incredibly touching scene where basically the sheriff of a little town has to face off on his own against the biggest, baddest criminal and gang of the region. And you find out at the end of that scene that basically the sheriff, by sacrificing his life, has actually managed to stop the gang and bring peace to the region for a certain amount of time. So now fast forward and you wake up as the son of that very same sheriff and your mother delivers you the bad news that unfortunately she needs help making money to keep the farm where you grew up on and send you away to the big city, that very same city where your father sacrificed his life to defend all those years ago. Now don't worry, I won't go any deeper into the storyline for spoiler sake, but basically, obviously, I think you can read between the lines that unfortunately that evil gang from back in the day starts riling up trouble in the very same city and it falls on you to do something about it. Now the reason I waited to talk about the storyline is that in classic JRPG style, one of the best points overall of this game is the storyline. At first, I really thought the storyline wouldn't deliver, that it would probably be a weak point of this game, but I was completely, completely wrong. By the end of this game, I was really invested into the storyline, so much so that the way the game ends is actually sort of disappointing, but not on the end that it's a bad storyline, it's that you can't believe that that's how the game ends when it does. And like I said, I really wasn't expecting, but by the end of the storyline, you have characters coming and going, and all of them have really full storylines and motivations, and all this is done in a very tiny RPG that lasts, I would say, for most players under 10 hours, you'll probably be done with the main storyline. There are some side quests, but for most people, I would say at 10 hours, you'll be done the main storyline, unless you really set to grinding levels at different parts of the game. The second part that really delivers about this game is the overall gameplay. Now, it does take a little bit at the beginning to get used to that whole timing issue, and it really is important to learn about your defensive abilities and really use them before your enemy's large attacks. That's just a little hint I'm giving you. Don't just smash the attack button repeatedly. You'll see that this game will really rewarding timing the defensive maneuvers at the right moment to have a defensive stance against your enemy's larger attacks. And if you're having any problems with the general gameplay, I would say look at the option menu. There's an option to actually have the auto stop every time someone's ability is up. Until you can get the timing issues down, I would highly recommend using it at the start of the game. It will really help you comprehend better how the general gameplay is set up. But once you have a handle on it, it the battles flow really quickly, which is actually good for this game. And overall, the battle system becomes really, really rewarding. So it's storyline, and gameplay being very well done. There are, however, a couple of things I find that could have been done a little bit better. Now, one of the points I think the game actually could have done better on is the overall graphical fidelity. Basically, I know they were going for a 16-bit style, but it's not a high-grade 16-bit style. It actually looks, you know, at some moments in between the 8-bit era and SNES era. Basically, some of the character models could have just been a little bit more detailed and they could have gone for a little bit higher fidelity overall in the graphics on the game. Now, when you get a close-up of a character while they're talking, I love those graphics because that really sells the spaghetti western style. But when we're talking about the overworld and the general graphics of the game and even the battle scenes, I do find that they went a little bit too retro. They could have gone for a little bit higher grade 16-bit rather than looking like one of those first 16-bit RPGs. But overall, we're lucky because a good RPG doesn't necessarily have to have crazy graphics. It just wasn't my favorite part of this one game. Another tiny point that comes up in some different parts of the game is some tiny problems with collision detection. Especially when you're going through doors, sometimes you go through a door and even though you're pressing the right direction when you're on the other side of the door, the game sort of thinks you're going back through the door and so you're back outside again. And it just unfortunately gets distracting because not everywhere, but in a few areas of the map, it did happen to me like four or five times in a row where you actually get frustrated and you're like, I'm trying to get into this building, you know, can you please just let me in? 
But just to be clear, this isn't about the whole game. There's just some specific areas in the game where this happens. And you'll sort of get used to them eventually. And you'll know what direction to hold once you're inside the building. And everything will be fine. So now, where does this all leave us with Boot Hill Heroes? Well, Boot Hill Heroes is the perfect example where the sum of the parts don't always add up to the end product. And in this case, the end product actually winds up being way, way better than the sum of its parts. Because you could think that, okay, it has subpar graphics, some collision pro detection problems, but great storyline and a great battle system. But overall, what really delivers us this game is the overall feeling that it leaves you with. And look, I bought this game and I couldn't put it down. I finished it straight in about two play sessions. And for a $10 eShop RPG, to me, that just speaks volumes about how engaging this game becomes once you get into its storyline. You start caring about the characters really rapidly and you really, really want to see what's going to happen next. So now that only leaves us with the verdict. And if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, I don't give a numerical score. I give an overall statement that explains exactly what I think about the game. And if you want to see what all those statements are, look at the description down below. You'll get a full list of what the different statements I use are and a little bit of details on what they mean. So you get a better idea of where this one is in the list. And to me, maybe you guessed it, but Boot Hill Heroes will be a definite pickup. To me, any fan of JRPGs or anyone looking for a first try into that the genre will love this game. And the fact that it's based on a spaghetti Western will probably be easier to understand for most people in North America than some of the older classic JRPGs. Why? Because these are motivations that we've seen over and over in spaghetti Westerns and even in most more modern action movies. So that's pretty much it for my review of Boot Hill Heroes. Like I said earlier, I hope you liked the video. If you did, please drop the like. It really does help out a lot. At the same time, if you aren't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.